Good afternoon. I'm Carrie Dawson, Technical Service Librarian with AWC and a member of the AZLA Professional Development Committee, and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. The AZLA Professional Development Committee provides enhanced professional development opportunities for members to increase the knowledge, skills, and abilities of library and information professionals across the state of Arizona. Before we get started, please note a few housekeeping details. Webinar participants are in listen-only mode. There will be an opportunity for Q&A at the end of the presentation. Please submit questions via the questions box in the control panel. The session is being recorded and the recording will be made available on the Arizona Library Association YouTube channel. A link will be provided in your follow-up email. Patricia Jimenez will be your technical director today. If you have any technical issues during the webinar, you can contact her via the questions box. If you are unable to hear sound during the webinar, you may dial in using the phone number and access code provided in your registration confirmation email. When you exit this session, you will be, will be directed to uh, a simple four question evaluation survey. The estimated time to complete this survey is two to three minutes. Please take the time to complete it as we use the data to improve our offerings to you and your feedback is very important to us. The Arizona Library Association wishes to acknowledge the native nations that have inhabited Arizona lands for centuries. We honor the people of these nations on whose ancestral homelands and resources AZLA members' libraries were built. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous sovereignty and will work to, to hold Arizona Library Association members accountable to the information needs of American Indian and indigenous peoples. I'd like to encourage library staff of all levels to consider becoming an Arizona Library Association member. Among other things, your membership enables AZLA to provide professional development opportunities to library stra staff across Arizona. You can visit www.azla.org for additional information. Speaking of the monthly webinar series, the Professional Development Committee wants you. If you have any, if you have expertise in library science that you think would help other libraries or librarians, please consider applying to be a webinar present presenter. Excuse me. Um, you can go to uh, tinyurl.com/backslash/azlapd/presenter/form to submit your idea. You can also find a link in your professional development monthly newsletter. I'd also like to announce the next program in our monthly webinar series brought to you by the AZLA Professional Development Committee. On May 13th, 2021, Megan Helwig, a Children's Library Associate for Pima County Public Library, will discuss the development and execution of Story Sketches virtual program. 
This presentation will cover the practical aspects of getting this program going from the idea stage to the final outcome. Story Sketches allows children and teens to submit short stories and, if the child wishes, illustrations that are turned into a narrative video posted on the library's PCPL Kids YouTube page. We will share the process of PCPL staff use to illustrate and narrate submitted stories and the structure of the program that has made it successful. With over a thousand views and counting, this is a great way to encourage, um, excuse me, it, this is a great way to engage with the community. Registration for this webinar is posted to the Arizona State Library Events Calendar advertised in the monthly professional development newsletter and a link will be provided in your webinar follow-up email. Today we have Christine Colon um, and she will be discussing Discovery Maps, the online guide to U.S. map collection. I would like to thank you all for attending today and now I will pass presenter privileges to Christine for her presentation. Hi, everyone. Can everybody see my slides? No, I don't think we're seeing them right now. Okay, let me uh, move them over here. That's it. Now we can. Okay, just let me <laughs> set them to presenter. There we go. Okay, everybody can see my slides now. Great. Um, I'm excited to have the opportunity to present on the online guide to U.S. map collections, so I greatly appreciate it. And to start off with, I want to give a little bit of background inf information. So after producing three editions in paper, the map and geospatial information roundtable which is part of ALA, is taking the guide to U.S. map collections online. In addition to serving as um, the definitive directory to U.S. map collections of all shapes, sizes, and formats, the new online guide will include a searchable map interface so that collections can be easily identified and located. And like its previous editions, the online guide will help promote map collections and related expertise um, which in turn will promote um, the people that work at those institutions. The Guide to U.S. Map Collections is a detailed directory of hundreds of map collections, cartographic resources, and libraries and repositories throughout the country. In the decades since the guide was last updated, there have been many changes in how libraries and other institutions collect and provide access to geospatial information in all formats. So back um, several years ago, back in 2014, the McGirt Publications Committee formed a task force um, to look at developing an online guide, online edition of the guide. And these are the anticipated outcome of the project, to develop a crowdsourced directory that provides accurate, up-to-date information about U.S. map collections. And so we wanted to include in the directory um, map collections that were at public libraries, historical societies and museums, universities and colleges, special libraries and government agencies to include also a searchable map interface that allows collections to be easily located by their geographic location, to have a searchable database of subject and geographic specialties among map collections. And um, also we wanted to make sure that um, the guide is promoting and demonstrating the relevance of map collections across the US.
So more recently, a brief history of um, the current project. As we were investigating developing an online guide, um, we started taking a look at what technology to use. So initially, we started out using Google Forms for the survey and for the map interface, um, a product called ArcGIS Online that's produced by a company called ESRI, a well-known GIS software company. We started to publicize a project um, asking people to fill out the survey. Um, as we are working on that, we started identifying some issues. The survey information that was entered in Google Forms couldn't be updated or edited. So if somebody wanted to go in that had um, put in information in the survey, wanted to go in and update it or edit it, they really couldn't do that. In addition, um, the project team members also could not edit the survey data, um, not even through ArcGIS Online, even though we had um, we had login information. And of course, I mean, as any type of project, especially at that point, we had a limited number of completed surveys. So we made a decision to move the survey to um, a product called Survey123 that is also a product of um, ESRI. And since they're both produced, both um, Survey123 and ArcGIS Online are produced by the same company, they interface really well together. I just wanted to show um, a photograph of the original task force. We're at the 2018 ALA conference, and we're doing a poster session on the online guide. Um, on the left-hand side is Carol McAuliffe from the University of Florida. In the middle is Paige Andrew from Penn State, and then myself on the right. Some other changes we wanted to make <clears throat> included, um, as I mentioned um, in um, one of the previous slides, we didn't have very many completed surveys, so we felt that we needed more people. And so the route we decided to take was to recruit volunteers to serve as regional coordinators. Regional coordinators were used very successfully in the last edition in 2006 local people would know about map collections in their state or their region better than um, people that are from a different region or different state. And also, um, so we also reviewed the survey questions and reduced them in number and decided to organize them into basic and detailed questions. And we set up the survey so that people would just need to fill out the basic section and um, if they wanted to, and then the survey would be complete. There are additional um, questions on the second page of the survey, and I'll go into what those are um, a little bit later. We updated information from the 2000, the entries from the 2006 edition with some basic information, um, double checking about um, the, um, if there'd been any changes to address, phone numbers, contact information, so that the regional coordinators could use that as a basis for contacting map collection and map collections in their region. And then um, an editable link was sent to the person who completes the survey so they could easily go back in and make any changes if they needed to. And then the idea also is that um, going forward that people can, um, that collections can go back in if there's any changes to, for example, like who's in charge of the collection or who the contact information is. So the project coordinating team are these individuals. Um, I mentioned Carol McAuliffe before. She's been our sort of the head of our um, project team from the beginning. Myself, Craig Hackett, he's at Denver Public Library, um, Nicole Kong from Purdue, and Angela Lee from ESRI. 
we decided to organize um, our regional coordinators into 10 different regions. And I believe that we took um, these regions from, um, uh, I think the EPA uses this, the Environmental Protection Agency and other federal agencies. And what we were, our goal was to have one to three coordinators for each region. And their responsibilities would be to contact map collections in their region, to follow up to ensure that information had been updated, and to assist um, smaller institutions and collections. And then also to work in coordination with the national project team to further develop and improve the online guide. So you can see sort of in the lower right-hand side, it says resources for regional coordinators. So what we did was we developed a handbook for regional coordinators to use. And as part of that handbook included email templates that they could use to contact um, map collections listed in the, um, from the 2006 online guide. We also hold monthly virtual meetings and we have um, provide email support. So we have a specific email address um, for people working on the online guide. Um, so a little bit more information about what we're looking for in a regional coordinator. Um, so we have some roles and expectations. We um, are hoping um, that the regional coordinators will commit to um, a specific length of service, um, at least to two years. So there's some continuity that they will attend the, um, our um, monthly meetings and that they serve as an ambassador to the online guide. And then just a broad overview of their primary responsibilities are to follow up on 2006 entries and also to recruit new institutions. So just to give you sort of an idea of um, what states are in each one of the regions and the coordinators that we have for each region, so region one is pretty much the um, Northeast and we have one person. Those are all fairly small states. We've got one person assigned at this point for region one for New York, New Jersey, and Puerto Rico. You can imagine, especially with New York and New Jersey, there'd be a lot of collections that would need to be contacted. So we've got two coordinators for that um, region three. At this point, we only have one person. Um, region four is um, the um, southeast, and we have two people that are working on that. Region five, mainly the Midwest. Um, region six, um, sort of the, um, the south, I guess you'd call it. Um, and we've got, mainly because of Texas being so huge and having so many collections, we've got three people that volunteered for that region. Um, and then the um, Mountain West, we have two. Um, region nine, um, I'm working on that one along with Janet Rays. We've got Arizona, California, Hawaii, Guam, and Nevada. Region 10, the Pacific Northwest. And then Region 7 is the only region we don't have any regional coordinators, and we're looking for people to help with that. So the progress that we've made since, um, since um, getting volunteers as regional coordinators, um, they've been focusing on the list of institutions from the 2006 guide. And that, that guide listed um, about 499 institutions, and we've contacted um, about half of them. 
and then the regional coordinators will be reaching out to other institutions. We've been promoting the online guide through presentations, publications, and press releases. And so there's the one today <laughs> that I'm giving. And then uh, one of my colleagues um, on the project team, Nicole Kong, will be presenting in July at the ESRI Education Summit. And the online guide itself <clears throat> has grown from um, 61 entries that we had, I think that was before we moved to using Survey123, and now we have 200 entries thanks to our regional coordinators. So this is sort of a little bit of an odd graphic, but <laughs> I think it really helps illustrate um, the guide and how entries are being added and how um, it's being used. So. On the right-hand side of the graphic, you'll see the regional coordinator, and they facilitate the creation and editing of all records. And then it's going into the, um, the database, the online guide database. And um, people from map collections, so you see them over on the left-hand side, are creating and editing their own record. And then up on the top, the researcher um, is ut utilizing the online guide. So they're um, searching the online guide. They're looking for maybe sp specific um, types of maps, maybe on, on particular um, topics or that cover particular areas. So they're identifying collections and then they're contacting those institutions to find out more specifics about what they have. So um, I'm going to um, go into the online guide and do a little bit of a live presentation. So along the left-hand side, you can see that there's some um, information about the online guide, and there's also a direct link from here to do to go to the survey um, to to fill it out. Um, and I mentioned before that there's like you know about 200 um, entries in the online guide, and if you look at this map, it doesn't really look like there's that many. Um, but um, if you, um, so here we are in Arizona, I'll just scroll in here, um, and you can see that, and scroll into Tucson, as you get closer, you can see that um, in Tucson, there's actually three different collections, um, and so um, you can um, click on one of those, this, well, it's not a very good one. Um, you can click on one of these and it brings up in direct information that um, the person who submitted this put in about their collection. And so you can just scroll down and you can find additional information. And it does provide geographical strengths, subject strengths, special collections, and then any specific types of digital collections. And, um, and just to like demonstrate how there's specific types of special collections in here, in um, the Mojave Museum of History and Arts in Kingman, does have maps and so they filled out the survey. Um, they don't have a large collection but we felt that it was important um, information to provide to people. There's also um, of course I mentioned um, we're looking for people, oops sorry I went too far, um, in Flagstaff, um, there's currently two collections that are listed. Um, here's the public library, and so they've provided information on what maps they have 
in their collection and they just filled out the basic information. And then I'd like to just do um, a search. There was a specific, just to give you sort of the, the breadth of the type of uh, map collections that are in here. There's one. Um, it's called the Lunar and Planetary Institute. And so this is a collection that's in um, Houston. And um, so they, you can scroll down here and you can see um, the types of what their strengths are, moon, Mars, planets, and satellites. So maybe not what you were expecting to find, type of thing you were expecting to find in the guide, but also very important. And then you can also, if you were looking for, say, um, geology maps, you could just put in geology and um, there's subject strengths. You can just click on this and this will take, oh, that's us. <laughs> take you to this one, Texas A&M University that focuses on, uh, one of their focuses is on geology. I'm going to go back to um, the presentation. And of course, also real important is um, the survey. And so um, I'm going to do just a short um, online um, look at what the survey looks like. And so just like with the online guide, it's referring, they refer back to each other. So here's a link to go directly to the online guide. And so this is just um, what the, um, the types of information that we asked for in the survey, just some real basic information, contact information, whether or not um, it's part of the um, federal depository or any other type of depository what the strengths are um, geographically, subject-wise, special collections. And this is where you can decide whether or not to continue on. If you decide not to, that's all the information that will be included. Um, you can go on. Um, I can't actually do show that to you because I'd have to fill in this first page of the survey first. Um, but like I mentioned, um, once you're finished, you'll get a link and you can go back in um, if you haven't finished the survey and complete it or go back in to update it. So <laughs> this is my slide for a call to action. Um, take the survey to get on the map. And like I mentioned before, we're looking for map collections at public libraries, historical societies, museums, colleges and universities, and special libraries. Um, I'm one of the regional coordinators for Region 9 that covers California, Arizona, and Nevada. So if you know of any map collections, we'd love to hear from you. Or if you work at one of these collections, we'd love to have you fill out the survey in the 2006 edition, there were 16 entries for Arizona. Um, we currently have seven in there. Um, and so there's some follow-up that I need to do with those collections. And of course, we'll be looking for additional collections that weren't included in the 2006 edition. Um, these are some links you might be interested in. They're also included in the handout. And I think we're going to put the, um, the links there in the chat for you to have, too. And as I begin to conclude, I wanted, just wanted to mention what our future directions are. We, um, we see the guide as a great way to identify opportunities for collaboration with neighboring map collections. 
So, you know, especially in um, maybe a large state um, like Texas, um, they may not know um, what um, collection strengths like another map collection that's relatively close to them might have. And so that might be a good opportunity to identify potential projects that they might want to work on together or not necessarily even in the same state. They may have um, similar, um, they may have collected similar types of maps and maybe they want to do some kind of a map digitization project together. We'd also um, like to expand the online guide and do more outreach to archives, museums, and other cultural institutions. And also um, investigate the potential for the online guide to include map collections outside of the US. We have been contacted by a couple of um, individuals um, from other countries. I think they're more interested in um, doing something similar, not necessarily adding their collections to this online guide. But we're, you know, real interested in, you know, working, potentially working with Canada and Mexico to add their collections to the online guide. So this is the con names and contact information for everyone on the project coordinating team. And um, all of our names are included in that um, online, in the, in the handout, sorry, in the handout. And then we'd like to open it up for questions. So we, we do have a couple of questions for you. Um, okay. The first one, where did you recruit your regional coordinators from? Uh, we initially did some um, presentations at, uh, at the um, American Library Association, the McGirt, one of the McGirt um, sessions, we did a presentation about the guide. I'm hoping that people that were involved with McGirt would be interested in um, working as a regional coordinator. Um, also through the Western Association of Map Libraries, we also did a presentation there and then some of the people on the project team have recruited um, people in their state um, that they knew um, that were um, from institutions that had map collections to help with the, um, as regional coordinators to, to help with the guide. Thank and you. then we've been, you know, promoting wherever else that we can. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, if one of our participants is interested in working as one of the coordinators, how would they volunteer? Um, just contact me. So just my email is just um, k-o-l-l-e-n at arizona.edu. Um, okay, and just a couple more questions. And anyone else, if you'd like to submit uh, your questions to the question box on the right of the screen, um, that would be great. Um, so one more, uh, how are the regional coordinator, coordinators identifying additional institutions not listed in the 2006 edition? Um, so there's really two ways that they're doing that. Um, since they're, um, just by their knowledge of what other map collections are in their state or in their region, just um, professional knowledge of, you know, perhaps um, working with those people, just, you know, knowing that those collections exist. And also um, another thing that we've been able to do that was, that's pretty amazing is that one of the people that was involved with the project at the beginning, Paige Andrew, who's at um, Pennsylvania State, he um, found out about a project that I think maybe somebody at Penn State had been um, head of the project um, that I think it was called 
data repo. And um, this was a project through the Society of American Architects where they were identifying repositories with archival collections. And I think they, um, what I understand that they sent surveys to about 150 archival organizations to identify where those um, archival collections were. Um, and so they identified about 18,000 repositories. So we're planning, we have that list, we're planning on um, having, we're hoping that the regional coordinators will be able to use those lists to help them identify additional collections. And before um, giving um, this presentation, I went in and looked and it had um, 327 for Arizona. So it'd be really um, interesting to go in and take a look and see if um, determine whether or not those archival collections have maps and then contact them and see if they'd be interested in being listed in the online guide. That's really fantastic. Okay, I have one last question for you, um, unless anyone else submits it, another one. Uh, what changes have you seen to collections between the last edition and now? Well, that's really interesting. <laughs> I was part of the group that went through the 2006 um, edition entries and um, took a look at what was there and um, went in and found those collections. Some of them um, no longer exist. There were like one or two of them that I found that uh, where they'd actually transferred their collection to another institution or organization. I think they felt that it made more sense for those maps to be part of this. I can't remember specifics, but we did find that happening. Um, sometimes they just, when one issue that I found was it was a, um, I think it was a state. No, it was a county agency in Arizona that I believe used to have print maps and all they have now seem to be, um, everything is online. We'd still wanna have them listed and I contacted them, but it was really difficult to figure out like who would be in charge and who to send an email to. Um, and also, um, and sometimes it was hard, like when you were, you know, like with public libraries, a lot of times, probably especially now, they may not have any print maps anymore. And so maybe they're assuming that people will just go to an online source, like maybe the um, US Geological Survey, topographic maps, if, you know, that's what somebody is looking for. So sometimes it was even hard to figure out if they had, still had maps. So I think that's been a change too. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, um, so I just I wanna remind you uh, that you do have handouts available in the right-hand menu. Christine, do you have any last thoughts before we go? Um, I would just like to encourage any of you who are on, um, that are listening in to this webinar to fill out the survey if you have maps in your collection or um, to let, if you know of others that do, it would be great if you could forward the information to them. Um, I've really appreciated everyone's attention and your great questions. You can, <clears throat> the handout, provides the, the links to um, the McGirt's website that has information about the online guide and also has the links to the online guide and to the survey. So if you do know of people like um, that might be interested in using the guide, um, that there is that direct link that you can provide people for. So that was all my um, last thoughts. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, we, we have another question if you're up okay. for it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, 
if another type of collection like paleontology collections and museums wanted to start something like this, could we talk to someone about setting up something similar? Sure, absolutely. I think that would be so, great. Okay, so they would just contact you. Um, yeah. And we put the email in the chat and plus the handouts on the right of your screen. All right, thank you all for being with us. Thank you, Christine. And thank you to the Arizona Library Association for sponsoring today's webinar. Don't forget to take our brief survey at the end of this webinar. You will receive an email with a link to the recording of this webinar and a participation certificate. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day.